Hello and welcome aboard. This is the first in a little mini series of videos of my solo sail from the UK to Belgium and I just thought I'd start out with some boat handling because some people have asked me to include more of that and I thought that this would be a good opportunity to do that. So what's happening here is the boat has two piles at the front and a pontoon behind. The two bow lines have been removed from the piles and the leeward stern line has also been removed. So we're just holding position there. I've got a little bit of a head on the throttle and there's only a light wind coming from the port side. So that one stern line is holding the boat in position and I've just got, got it balanced with the throttle so that it's sitting central to the two piles ahead of me. When I want to leave, all I've got to do is take the throttle off and put the engine into neutral. That takes the tension off the stern line and then I've got a little window of time to get the stern line off before the bow is blown off. As I said, these are just light winds here today, which makes it quite easy for me. And then once I've done that, I can retrieve the stern line, put the boat into gear and then start making my way out of the slip. I've got to be careful of the pile on the port quarter there because uh, as I turn that's quite close um, but I managed to make it through there without bumping into anything. And here we are into open water. I'd just like to point out at this time that I'm not trying to be a smart aleck here, I'm not pretending that I'm some kind of instructor on boat handling, I'm not, I'm just making things up as I go along, but um, I'm going to be including my boat handling during this whole trip so you can see what works and what doesn't and you know I'm going to be sharing with you the things that go well and the things that go not so well so that we can all learn together. As I'm taking the boat out through the lock and onto the river where I'm going to be tying up to the fuel pontoon initially, just let me tell you a little bit of the backstory of what's going on here. Basically, Rossella and I had a discussion and it was decided that it was far more efficient for me to go to the boat on my own and just crack on, do the urgent essential things on the boat to get it ready to cross the channel and Rossella and Emma would stay in Italy. This was definitely the right call to make and I was able to do lots of jobs on the boat before setting off on this journey. Uh, I did a huge list of things, I'm not going to go through them all, but the most important ones were cleaning out the fuel system. What tends to happen is in the fuel tank there is condensation often in a boat's fuel tank. Then in the interface between the fuel and the water there is a, a kind of algae which can grow, a black gunk. And what happens is people go out and the first time they're in rough seas the water and fuel get sloshed around, that disturbs the algae, that gets sucked up into the fuel intake and then the engine cuts out when you least want it to. So I didn't want that to happen to me and I spent some time to flush the fuel and replace the filters. I then had some play in our steering and um, it wasn't too bad, you know, a lot of people probably would have ignored it but it was just annoying me and knowing that I was going to be going out into this channel I wanted my steering to be hunky-dory and we intend to keep this boat for a long time so you know things like this I'd rather just get them resolved straight away before they get any worse. So I was able to take the steering apart and basically replace three bearings. There was only one that had failed but while I was in there I decided to replace three bearings on our rack and pinion steering system. Um, it was a bit of a difficult job on my own. Um, I didn't have any bearing pullers or anything so I had to use hot and cold and other kind of techniques to, to do it but anyway I got there in the end and I'm very glad that I did that because our steering is now so smooth that I can literally turn our wheel just by holding the nut, the, the steering wheel nut, I can hold that and operate the steering just with that kind of very small amount of leverage. It's beautiful. I replaced a lot of running rigging and inspected the standing rigging. That involved going up and down the mast a lot on my own and I made a video about how I do that. And the running rigging, I extended it so that it's all operable from the helm position. So there's nothing that I can't reach while I'm sitting at the wheel of the boat now. Which, if I'm ever without an autopilot, I'll be very glad of. So there you have the backstory. Now on this day in question, I took the boat through the lock at about 8 o'clock in the morning and I intended to leave and be safely tucked up in an anchorage before it got dark but unfortunately I was delayed for a few different reasons and it was quite a tough call. I almost didn't leave this day, I almost left it until the next day but the weather forecast wasn't good and I was kind of just being chased down by weather and I thought you know what let's just go. It's my first ever solo sail, it's going to be dark, it's going to be a challenge but I'm just going to go for it. So that's what I did.
it's time to go sailing. But first, I need to weigh anchor on my own without a windlass. And yesterday, I made a little invention which I hope will make that a whole lot easier. This little bad boy. I had a lot of stainless steel left over from our DIY solar arch and I made this up in an hour from start to finish and I've tested it in the marina, it seems to work extremely well. But let's use it in the real world and see if it lives up to my expectations. I'm sure you can guess how this works just by looking at it, but just let me show you anyway. You pull up on the chain and then when you let go, it locks and you can release. So we're currently on the River Medway. There's a little bit of current running. You can see from the eddies coming off the back of the boat there and the rudder. And the wind is a little bit variable. A big front just went through there and it was blowing up to 28 knots. But it's currently 11 or 12 knots. Okay, we're on roughly the right heading there. 12 knots at the moment, 13. So I'm gonna engage forward, put the autopilot in auto, and then I'm gonna watch these boats here and I'm gonna use them to show me when I'm creeping forwards. So I am moving slowly forwards there. Let's go and lift the chain. clear water. Yes autopilot I know you need a little bit more throttle I know I understand. I don't know if you'll be able to see this but there's a weather front over there so that might hit us shortly. Time will tell. actually used jack stays before any boat but today I'm going to because I'm with my father and my husband I'm on my own these waters aren't particularly friendly if I were to go in it wouldn't be a good situation so I'm just gonna set them up now this is a a uh, webbing that I bought from an industrial supplier so it's nice and cheap but it's really strong it's like 3,000 some of kilos breaking load and then this reel is a cable reel that I bought on Amazon for about 10 quid 9 quid Nice and tidy, easy to stow it away.
bye bye Gillingham Marina. We made some lovely memories there and it's quite sad to be leaving but pasture's new. I think I'm going to have to put this big camera away. <laughs> moment isn't it when you knock off the engine oh. okay I'm about to get some mainsail out for the first time ever out because that front is imminent and I don't want to get blown about too much. Just take things easy. That little boat there just reminded me to put my nav lights on as well. Guys, after a lot of hard work, this is very nice.
darkness is uh, quite a primeval thing, isn't it? It tends to darken the mood. <laughs> did you see what I did there? So yeah, it's going to be very different arriving at this anchorage at night. But you've got to push yourself, haven't you, to uh, extend your capabilities. You've got to push yourself and uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm being conservative with the sails because this is all quite new really and there's no need to push everything to the limit you know I'm already doing something which for me is a challenge so I don't mind only doing four and a half knots or whatever rather than trying to scream along at seven there's an old military fort there looking quite spooky in the dark <laughs> Well, do you know what? I'm really happy that I'm doing this. It's easy to just duck out of things and think, oh, you know, I'll do it tomorrow. I was tempted to do this tomorrow, but you learn by pushing yourself. So, I'm really happy to be doing this. This is actually really quite relaxing. A stretch of the river called Long Reach, and it really is a long reach. It's not really a great deal for me to do other than to sit here and enjoy the atmosphere. Special, really. It's nice to be sharing this with you guys as well. 16 knots apparent. Just about to pass the buoy. And there's another one beyond in a similar direction. So again, there's not really much for me to do. The speed vary in between 4 knots and about 4.8 knots depending on the gusts and that's with a that's the GPS speed and we've got about 0.6 of a knot of current against us there is a halyard which is annoying me so I'm going to go forward and sort that out and as I did before I'm going to remember to clip in there we go so I've got the clip on the jack line there This is um, quite tough work actually, in the sense that there's a lot going on. Um, seeing is not particularly easy, you guys probably can't see anything either. But for example, the, uh, the buoy there that I passed according to the chart, I couldn't see it in real life. But yeah, so by the time you know, because you, I'm on a river, there's not a lot of room, and every few minutes I've got to jibe. So it's a bit of a pain. It could be a lot worse, but it's uh, it's not easy for me. We're doing well. You can see the GPS speed there varying quite a lot, but we're doing four and a half knots ish, and we've got a one knot current against us. So this would be five and a half knots. Was it not for that foul current? So yeah, I am uh, I'm enjoying this, but it's a challenge. I tell you. I'm not relaxing, put it that way. It's uh, confession time. I just scared the bejeebus out of myself there. Um, the wind was picking up and I left it too late to reef and then yeah things just got a bit hairy so 28 knots on the wind deck on the wind indicator and I still had the sails up at that point 
I was getting them down but I was backing forward to the, the helm and the autopilot and uh, I was resting with the sails and it's wind over tide so yeah I've learned a lesson I've learned a lesson I've pushed it too far this time you know it's true that you have to push yourself to uh, extend your your boundaries you know but yeah I went too far anyway things have calmed down now thank goodness I've started up the old iron jenny the sails are away and um, I'm about to turn the corner into the anchorage in a little while and I hope things will calm down there and the dust will settle I can get the anchor down and then go and unwind I'll be looking forward to uh, some kind of beverage it may even just be a cup of tea but uh, I'm really looking forward to it whatever it is I just turned the corner into Stangate Creek here I've got a lot of on my face it is uh, 25 hours apparent right now Okay, the wind has dropped a little bit. It's about 16, 15, 16 knots. And with it, my pulse has, has dropped. <laughs> I really do love being anchored. However, on this occasion, it's not really very relaxing yet uh, because I can't actually see where I'm anchored. It's pitch black. I can see that there's moonlight, I can see this land over there and I can, I can just make out land over there like behind me so that's my lee shore um, but I can't really see it and that's disconcerting because I can't see how far away it is and I've got other, I've got instrumentation and stuff but from a human point of view it's just a bit disconcerting to not be able to see the land that you're anchored next to I'm finished out here now, I've got the anchor ball up, um, this amount of chain out, I've pulled back on the engine, about 2200 rpm in combination with the wind and that wasn't moving so the anchor's well set. Well, on a positive note, I have had a pizza and a cup of tea which was very nice. My aim is to get over the channel and uh, I'm in a real rush to do that because I really I'm missing Emma and Rosello like crazy and I need to go and see them ASAP. Um, I am currently here Sharfleet Creek and the question is I've been looking at the, the weather forecast and to be honest it's just not good these are the actual weather charts from the period when I made this crossing I couldn't get them in knots they're in miles per hour unfortunately but you get the picture anyway now I just want you to bear in mind that this is my first ever solo sailing trip this is brand new to me I'm sailing in unfamiliar waters I've never crossed the channel on a sailing boat before you know, this isn't like something that I've done 10 times before with other people and now I'm doing it on my own for the first time. This is the first time I'm ever doing it and I'm learning everything as I go. Re I really am quite inexperienced at this whole thing. So bearing all that in mind, what I really wanted was kind of, you know, 15 knots. Uh, that would have been ideal. But as you can see from these charts, it was a lot stronger than that. And the windows of opportunity were very, very small in between quite dangerously strong winds so it kind of put me in a very awkward position it was difficult for me to deal with but you'll see in the upcoming videos how i got around this and how things panned out for me i have to see what that was like tonight in the river being out here somewhere you know realistically to uh, to reduce the stress and you know the chances of things going wrong i want there to be less wind that's what i've realized tonight so um there we are, so now I'm kind of a bit stuck because if I want to I can push push and make make it to Ramsgate and then my plan would have been to anchor off Ramsgate just here. Um, I spoke to the Harbour Master and that's all fine and it's free which is nice. 
but the problem is that there's no wi weather window so I could be hanging around there for a week um, in not very good weather and is that really is there any point in that so options are I could go around the Isle of Sheppey there's another anchorage kind of in this area so that, that's kind of towards my destination it gets me a little bit closer and it's still sheltered um, so that is one option or do I stay here in these creeks which are quite protected while this weather blows over or do I go for example to Rochester there are some boys just here in Rochester uh, and basically that puts me in a, in a town it's it's tough I, don't, I honestly don't know what to do so the, the, the point is I've just spent until one o'clock looking at options and I still don't have my answer so I am about to go to bed and tomorrow's a new day and I'll see I'll look at this again tomorrow and see what's coming next I hope you uh, have enjoyed seeing this. It turned out a little bit different from how I expected, but do you know what? I'm, I'm glad that it did because it's all experience, isn't it? It's all experience. So, there we are. Uh, bedtime. I've got to make the bed and get in it. Before I left today I was listening to the VHF and a boat went aground and then there were various communications. Initially they were asking for a tow um, and yeah there was quite a lot of urgency about the situation and then um, a little bit later there were lots of communications of people taking the mickey and saying oh uh, at least you're going to miss the, the traffic on the way home after your six hours of waiting and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, this this area is a challenging place to sail. Um, you know, where I am now, it's muddy. A little bit further out from where I am now, there are lots of sandbanks around here, and this, the Goodwin Sands, for example, sandbanks. Um, the currents here are very strong, and these sandbanks shift around, and you know, some of them dry so uh, you know at low water there is there are, you can actually see them um, so yeah and, and like I say they do move around so when you're sailing in these areas that are relatively shallow and you've got sandbanks that can move around you've got to be careful and with six meter tides you know you've got to try and be, be sure about the right timings and stuff like that so anyway it's time for me to go now so see you soon